Karl Polanyi died in 1964. My mother then cared for the literary legacy, the translations um, and publications, quite a few translations, French to Spanish and so on. But when my mother died, uh, that responsibility came to me. I, I have no brothers or sisters and nobody else. And uh, so I really considered that I will now concern myself uh, with the letter, literary legacy of my father, and I have been doing that ever since. My mother has her own history, and it is uh, a history of eminent participation in the revolutions which put an end to the First World War, 1918, specifically the Hungarian Revolution. And she is uh, known for her activities there. And um, when she died, the Hungarian embassy in Ottawa asked whether they uh, could please, uh, would I permit them to have a funeral and give her semi-state honors and be buried in Hungary. I was totally amazed at this request. And I said, well, certainly not. However, eventually I know my mother and my father uh, will wish to rest uh, in Budapest. But first, you must honor Karl Polanyi as well as his wife Ilona. Probably the best way to do that is to organize some event uh, respecting his scholarly work. And with much negotiation, this is exactly what happened. We managed uh, to, ha to have a um, centenary conference in 1986, that is 100 years from the birth of Karl Polanyi. By this time, I had invited um, a former student of mine, Marguerite Mendel, to, who, who, whose thesis was about the work of Karl Polanyi, to work with me. She assisted in organizing that conference in Budapest. Incidentally, the politics were that I could invite all the international participants but they, at that time, would uh, invite the local Hungarian participants. Uh, at this meeting, it was uh, really a moment of reflection. Um, I was very conscious of the rise of neoliberalism in, 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 in its worst manifestations. This was the era of Thatcher and Reagan respectively implementing those kind of policies, abolishing progressive taxation and all the rest of them, you know what they are. And uh, said, how can we continue this? This can't be a one, one once only uh, yeah. conference. Yeah. And uh, Margie Mendel undertook to propose to her university at Concordia whether they would consider hosting an institute. Mm -hmm. And that is what happened. Uh, and so that institute was uh, set up at Concordia University. I uh, made available on a loan basis uh, the, the document. Yep. And many years later, I think in 2017, I decided to donate this collection to Concordia. It was a very nice uh, event. And I, there is a, a video in which I explain why I donated it, not to Hungary or not to Vienna and not to McGill, but to Concordia. Yeah. And incidentally, uh, it is, I made a legal provision in that donation that they would continue to, to uh, support the Institute for another 10 years, for at least 10 years. Yeah. So we have that. In, but other than that, I have no position, no formal position in the uh, institute there, no. People assume that because <coughs> I grew up uh, in this home and with always a close relationship with my father and a personal, we always had with both of my parents a good relationship, that I learned uh, something since I was so high from my father. We were following his footsteps, of course. So that, that really is not how it happened. I must have read The Great Transformation, but it was not the kind of uh, revealing event that it was for many other people. 
I really began to appreciate my father's work much more from the time from the 1980s on. That partly because I became much more familiar with it, but it is also because I think the times, uh, let us say for all the same reasons that many other intellectuals within the social sciences or in other areas have come to appreciate the work of Karl Polanyi, uh, I joined them in that appreciation. This book is a collection of essays that were assembled and put between two covers as a book in 2013. And by that time, I really had noticed that the, the growth of the financial sector, finance, insurance, real estate, within the economies of the advanced countries was disturbing growth of various kinds of financial assets, including derivatives of original assets and so forth, uh, was, was of, a, of, a, of, a, of a scale uh, that was, I think, significant. And that is why I coined this phrase of great financialization. I think since that time, it has become increasingly recognized in, as the uh, UNCTAD report of 2018, 17 and 18 pointed out, that the global economy is driven by global finance now. Mm -hmm. That, uh, to quote, it is not trade or technology, but rather finance, and I'm quoting more or less from the UNCTAD report, that has been driving the world, the global economy for the past three decades, quote unquote. Now, when I coined that word, I was not aware, I think, of the significance of having coined this phrase of great financialization. It is increased it because what this is doing, it, it, in, in, in my view, it, it has, for instance, destroyed the, what used to be the classic American corporation, classic American corporation used to produce products um, and, uh, and, and sell them on an ever-increasing scale. Um, it, it incidentally uh, employed a lot of people and incidentally satisfied a lot of consumers. Uh, that was the classic corporation of the 1950s, 60s, or 70s. But increasingly, this has become financialized. Increasingly, the shareholders uh, are uh, financial conglomerates of various kinds, pension funds, investment funds, other kinds of financial funds. And it has come with the uh, max maximizing of shareholder value as, as the metric of success of a corporation. Well, what could be more financial than that? And it has had that effect of financializing the corporation. But it uh, goes beyond that, as Polanyi explained, if, you, <coughs> if an economy is driving the society, the society then uh, uh, reflects that our societies, our households have become financialized. The degree to which, yes, households are dependent on finance. Pensions are no longer the, based on uh, some average of uh, the last year's uh, income. They're based on the earnings of the pension funds with all its ups and downs. We know about all the, the mortgage indebtedness and student loans and all the, all the rest of it without going into detail. The fact is that whether it's the non-financial corporation or whether it is the household sector of the economy, they have become increasingly financialization. And then we come to the governments. And one of the problems, particularly uh, noticeable in Europe, is the degree national governments have become dependent on the bond market. And in the case of Europe, they, don't even, they can't even print their own money anymore. They have the euro. You, you have a, 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 uh, an economy that is increasingly, as I say, financialized in a society that is increasingly short-term views 
and that goes along with the information technology and <laughs> with this with the consumerism and the short this desire somehow of young people particularly to have immediate results but not young people only for everything to be immediate and that is in my view that is closely related to financialization.